giving me the opportunity to grow with all of you today. I am following two amazing women scientists that really hit on some key objectives and some similar themes that I will be showcasing today. I will share my screen because like the last presenter, I want to make sure I stay on time and that we have value. So one second. Okay, can you see my screen? Awesome, I will get started. I will assume that you can see my screen. Well, thanks for having me here today. Today, I'm going to take a different spin and really talk about how do we ignite your spark. And with that, I think it's important. I'm going to kick off with the introduction of who I am. I would really like to hear from others on the chat. I'm a very interactive presenter. I love building together, collaborating, and helping you become the best version of yourself. So a little bit about me that was covered in the introduction is, yes, I love science. I've always loved science. I grew up in my dad's science lab at age four. And I remember completing my first science experiment by taking a Q-tip swab and swabbing the handle of a water fountain and then growing it on a Petri dish and counting the colonies of bacteria. I've always had a passion to also feed the growing population. I started agriculture research at age 11. And my dad was a science teacher and community outreach trailblazer where I just really loved science, competing at regional and state and international competitions. And I kept that passion alive all the way through schooling. What most don't realize and know that yes, I'm a scientist, but I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, I'm an aunt, I'm a musician. You can be so many different things. So if you get anything out of today's presentation, is I'm gonna tell you to be you and the best version of you. I triple majored in my undergrad in opera performance. I'm a classically trained opera singer since age 13. And then I also did piano composition performance, percussion, drumming, and then plant science. I decided to keep plant science as my focus. It's always been my passion and music as a hobby. I was lucky to travel through the university system to get master's and PhD in plant breeding and genetics. But a fun fact is I thought for sure I would be a professor. My last year of my PhD, I decided to teach four courses, you know, forage production, crop and weed science. Um, I just had a passion for inspiring the future generation. So I went on to get my graduate certificate in college education. Well, Life took me a different route, and this is the fun part about life. It's an adventure, it's a journey, and it's even more exciting when you step outside your comfort zone and you say yes to one opportunity that you thought that you would never say yes to. And you're gonna see that I have a lot of yes on those opportunities coming up, but it has transformed and made my journey fun, dynamic, and memorable. So I met Dow Agro Sciences at the time in 2011 in San Antonio, Texas. And at this time, I thought for sure, I'm going to be a professor. Well, I met them and I learned that in industry, I could not only be on the cutting edge of research as a scientist, but I could lead individuals and people, future scientists, and I could be an adjunct professor. That right there, I was excited for this. I'm a very, I'm an extrovert, meaning I love social and people. I move fast and industry just fit my personality and my style at the time. So I joined industry in 2012. I'm coming up on 10 years at Corteva in March. So really grateful for my journey, as you can see. And Corteva, if you're not familiar, was the merger between Dow and Pioneer. So you might have DuPont, Pioneer, Dow, Dow Chemical. And I started in the Heritage Dow Acre Sciences side. 
I kicked off my career as a peer scientist, as a soybean breeder in North Dakota. I then relocated the family to Minnesota and was a corn breeder. This was the point in my career where my patents and my hybrids were really developed and refined. And journeys are fun. I, uh, you know, about a year and a half into this position, I was reached out and visited by the vice president of research of the company at the time. And I was a corn breeder. And they said, hey, Megan, can you drive me through the sunflower field? Well, I love sunflower fields. So I said, yes, okay, let's do it. But I was nervous. I said, why is the VP of research having me drive through sunflower and not my test plots? I wanted to show germplasm, check out the new inbred lineup, check out this hybrid creation. And I was nervous because I thought, oh, the Megan sparkle was too strong. And actually it turned out to be a great conversation. At the time, the individual and the leader told me, Megan, you're different than most breeders. Then I started to sweat again. I said, oh no, what is this gonna mean? And it actually was positive. They said that I was empathetic and I, I, they felt I was a natural born leader. And so in 2013, this is where I morphed my role from straight scientist into people leader. And it's something that I absolutely love. It energizes me. I get excited to grow individuals' careers, scientists' careers, breeders' careers, engineers' careers. And it's just been such a fun journey. So we relocated to South Dakota. I was able to stay scientist. So I still was a corn breeder. I then, uh, I built a research facility from the ground up. And that was intense. And one of the most difficult parts of my career, but exciting and the most memorable. I also developed the testing footprint across the state of South Dakota, driving around, handing out hats and drinking a cup of coffee with farmers to really figure out what were the issues and the problems that they were seeing. I then led a team at the station and I picked up global leadership in 2013 as well for Chile, Puerto Rico, Hawaii and Mexico for winter nursery production. You know, I, I loved this position. This is the longest position. We've had a lot of relocations, but we were in South Dakota for about four years. The same individual that, you know, contacted me on that one row came out again. And I said, okay, where is my next step on the journey? And I was selected for what they call the CEO program. So individuals that have a passion for leadership, understand science, research development, um, the business, the return on investment piece, they put you into a situation and see how you handle yourself as a leader, as a person, as a mom. Uh, it was super fun. They sent my family and I near Budapest, Hungary. So we relocated to Europe in Saget, Hungary. And I led all research and commercial for sunflower and corn and a station with over 15 different languages present. And so I made a commitment to learn Hungarian. If you don't know Hungarian, it is a very difficult language, but it's a beautiful language, but it's really difficult to learn. And so my last meeting, I made a commitment to the team to lead it in Hungarian. And it was just a really fun, great experience, amazing scientists, amazing leaders that are transforming the world today. We got back stateside and they announced the merger of Corteva. And this is where we relocated again to a, a Northern Iowa and then um, for about a year and a half, and then they relocated our family again, one last time where I am today um, in Des Moines, Iowa. And this is a global business center for Corteva. And as you can see, the last two positions, I moved from plant breeding, this might be a question, to crop protection. But why? I, I have this need to be green and growing, continuously learning, and I need to be thriving. I, I always tell my family, I can't be on the vine and dying. I need to be energized and excited to go get it. So I learned a different platform in 2019. I moved from plant breeding, which I've been in for so long. Uh, and I moved over to crop protection to meet new individuals, marketing, um, our formulations team, dive into the legal team, regulatory team, and just really start enhancing a different section of my mindset and a different section of the company because I feel every interaction is important and to make every interaction count. You know, my current role, what I currently do today is I am global tech adoption lead, but the other two amazing female scientists on the call today, they may relate 
our positions and titles, especially at Corteva, it changes quite a bit. <laughs> um, so I tend not to make business cards anymore um, just because it is a dynamic space, especially in technology. But one thing is I get to use my plant breeding background as a foundation. All the knowledge that I gained as developing new hybrids and also just the academic breeding perspective, that's the foundation of what I'm gonna use today. Today, I get to use and find technology that can enable and help our breeders be better breeders and ultimately help our customers find out what's going on in their fields and at what level. And so today, I lead technology from drone application, product application, uh, to drone imaging, to robotics, to sensors, uh, to different software programs. I never thought if you would have asked me five or even let's say three years ago that Megan, you're going to be leading a team of engineers, data engineers, software engineers. I would have said, ha, that's funny. Uh, but I am today. And it's so fun. They teach me, you know, basic code, <laughs> basic code. Uh, but they teach me a lot about myself and my leadership style as well. And so I'm really grateful that my current role, I get to intersect not only crop protection, but on the digital side, the digital uh, company, the regulatory, the legal, the safety, um, and, it's, and the global um, um, component of it too. And from a global perspective, I get to work from scientists with, you know, from China and New Zealand to Japan and Brazil and Argentina and Italy and Germany and France and Africa and Switzerland and even across North America. And so the point is, I love who I work with. And another point, if you get anything out of today's presentation is really make every interaction count and meet new people. And how do you get the most out of every interaction and networking experience? And how do you grow together? So instead of just saying hi, let's say that hi and get a cup of coffee and start growing together and helping each other, supporting each other and advocating for each other. So that's a little bit about what I do at Corteva today. I'm also a STEM outreach fanatic. Yes, that is correct. I have a passion for inspiring the future generation of scientists and leaders. I'm a strong woman and youth advocate as well. Uh, my husband and I co-founded a science, technology, engineering, and math camp that we say it's open ages 5 to 99. And we're working on a virtual camp um, as I speak today. I'm a AAAS, that's the American Association of Science If an Ambassador, and that's where I, we have life-size statues. 120 women were selected around the world um, as outreach science trailblazers, and it was a huge honor. Uh, my statue was next to somebody that is a National Geographic Explorer or the doctor for the women's U.S. soccer team. And so just really amazing women doing amazing things, and our mission is if they can see it, they can be it. And so that program has opened up the doors way more than I could say on the outreach perspective. I'm big on nonprofit boards. Um, one near and dear to my heart is the Science Center of Iowa board membership, but also food security, women's inclusion network. I joined um, recently some different programs to help enhance agriculture awareness in the communities. And then I always visit schools, et cetera. My list is long. The point is, I challenge you to always think about community as you go through your career, as you go through your PhD or undergrad graduate journey, always think about community. What can you do to make the place where you live a better place? So just a little bit about me, I can make these slides available. If you wanna learn more just about my background, why I joined Corteva, why I joined the space I am and why I love science. Um, I included some links for some recent podcasts that we had. And then also just from some award um, award just write-ups, they ask some fun questions so you can get to know me a little bit on the personal level. And then a picture of this fun orange statue, which my kids and I, we did go to Texas this year. We visited the Dr. Megan statue. And, you know, most moms would be like, yeah, I want to tell you the amazing experience. My kids were scared of it. They looked at my statue and they were poking at it and they said, Mom, this is a little weird, uh, but they said it was pretty cool to see all the orange statues. So I will make this available to the presenters today if you'd like to have access to additional information. I also was recently featured on national television. Uh, this is with the CBS Mission Unstoppable. So actress Miranda Cosgrove from the iCarly series, or I don't know any other series right now, but she's an awesome advocate and supporter for science, technology, and even agriculture. 
And so we did a segment on robotics and drones and how we apply them into our current agriculture setting to help feed the growing population. So I can share that YouTube link if interested and want to dive in what some of the technology that we're utilizing today at Corteva. But today, what I thought would be important is because I, I thought, and they did an amazing job, the women before me speaking today, they talked about communication. They talked about flexibility. They talked about how important it is to be your best self, the most genuine, authentic, real version of who you are. And so today, this is a different type of twist um, from the other two presenters to shake it up a bit, if it's my personality, is you don't have to share only if you feel bold enough. But really, I want you to do this exercise along with me, whether it's in your head or you write down on a piece of paper. I want us to grow together. Of what does it mean when I say big rocks? So as a women scientist, as a woman global leader, something that it took me the longest time to realize, and this is one of my learn from Dr. Megan's uh, mistakes and failures, because this is how we can become better and we leverage each other's experiences and exposure. And one thing I can say is when I finish my PhD, I'm gonna tell a personal story. I finished my PhD, I was super excited. I started with Dowager Sciences and five days after I, my very first day at my new job, just five days after we found out that we were expecting our first child. I was thrilled. I was excited. But part of me was nervous because my very first plant breeder meeting, I was one of two women out of a room of 150 individuals. And I felt the need that I had to act like everybody else, be like everybody else, fit in. And it took me a little bit longer. Um, fast forward my career because it's not that way today. But this is why I'm telling you this lesson early on, is that you need to be the most genuine, authentic version of yourself always. Because when you activate the best version of yourself, others will activate their best versions. And then the team just clicks. You have success, you have impact, and you have deliverable outcomes. And so first and foremost, you know, right away when I thought that I had to act and be like everybody, we were walking through a cornfield. And if you ever walk through a cornfield, you can close your eyes and envision this. Um, it was an irrigated cornfield. So they have these irrigation ditch tracks and my foot got stuck in one of those tracks. And I ended up falling at eight months pregnant and I landed right on my stomach. And I was rushed um, to the emergency room and we had to make sure that the baby was okay and that I was okay and everything was good. And I sat in this room, you know, recognizing a life is short and also recognizing that I need to be myself because it also impacts my health, my safety. And also I have other people who look after too. And at that moment in time, just that one quick fall, everything was fine. We had a healthy, beautiful baby girl um, who is thriving today and she's growing up way too fast. Uh, but that time is just, it made you pause and it made me think of how we need to always be ourselves and always do what's best for us. And so there's been times where, yes, you get imposter syndrome and you change your who you are to fit in or you feel that you're not good enough or you don't meet the mark. I'm telling you, you are. I saw in the questions in the comments, quick, you know, do you have any advice of how to go and really just tackle imposter syndrome? One thing that works for me, and I'll get back on focus, is I do the power pose. I literally, in a mirror, I will stand there and I do the Megan power pose, and I'll do that, and I give myself a pep talk. And when I say pep talk, I tell myself, you got this, go get it, be kind, be yourself, be you. And it just helps before any presentation or any interaction or any day that we tackle. So big rocks are important. And I can tell you how I live my big rocks. If you ask me today what my big rocks are, I would say family. I aim to always be a visible pillar. I'm really passionate about agriculture, innovation, global connectivity, outreach, community involvement, but family's number one. Here's a couple of areas that I do to really activate this big rock. Is I have, I sit down with my team and I look at my calendar on Friday um, for the next week. And we look at it and I see if there's any meetings that I can eliminate or not attend if it does not relate or correlate to one of my big rocks. 
And, and I started doing that to get, a, you know, to also enhance energy boosters, but also to be mindful of why am I here? Why am I doing what I do? And everything I do is for my family and for community. And so this just really helps me focus in. Another fun air thing that I started doing, so even others on the call today, the other amazing women, I would say is that I have two cell phones. I have a personal and a work cell phone. And at the end of the work day, I will take my work cell phone and I will lock it into a plastic tote in my garage. And so I put it into a tote, I shut the lid, and that phone is in that lid until I need it again. I normally have meetings at night because I work a lot with China colleagues. So I will have to pick it up later. But when that phone is in that tote, that means I have quality family time. And that is where my focus is. And that is where my focus will stay until I have to activate the work, Megan, again. And so just something to think about. There's ways to really, if family is important to you, um, health, wellness, well-being, just really think about ways that you are living your big rocks. And so I think photos tell a great story. Your assignment, as I tell photos, are what are your big rocks? Tell me your top three big rocks in the comments, or even just think about them and just have them in your head. And then are you living those you know, big rocks? I don't want polishing or always rebuilding, but are you living and actively making decisions based on those big rocks? And so these are just some fun photos of my team across the globe. Um, I, I don't know if you see my cursor, but this individual is from Brazil. So Gabriel's awesome. He always holds drones for me and we take fun photos. And, and um, also we took a photo with the Brazil and Argentina team um, when we're on the field and they said, let's take a photo with the drone. So uh, we, we have fun, but really making every interaction count is something that's really near and dear to my heart. And then also outreach, you know, giving back to generations to come. How do we enrich the lives of those who produce and those who consume? And that pictures just help paint that story. So big rocks are number one. I want you to think about it. I want you to write down your big rocks. And yes, I know I give assignments. I'm probably not going to be invited back because of all the assignments I give. But I think it's important that you focus on you and you build the best version of you. So building brand. I love this quote. Your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. And it is so true. And this is an exercise that I find really valuable, especially as women in science and especially as women aspiring for higher senior leadership level roles. And I have high aspirations and I, and I hope that I inspire others just to go get it and follow, follow their dreams. And so this is what I call the Megan's invest in yourself exercise. How many CTO, CEO, or head of R&D positions exist in the company? One, in a qualified candidate pool, how do you stand out? And are you standing out for the right reasons? This is something where I pause. I mentor 82 individuals around the world. Uh, 40 are at Corteva. The others are outside and external to Corteva. And I mentor because are individuals standing out for the right reasons? What can I do to help activate their career roadmaps? What can I do to help not just be a cheerleader, but be a supporter and an advocate to bring them in the science and agriculture and technology space? What are your top strengths? And then are you able to share them in 30 seconds? So as you reflect about this over the weekend as well, think about your big rocks. What are those core big rocks for your life? And then think about what are my top strengths? And can I give Dr. Megan an elevator pitch that tells my core strengths and my values of who I am in just 30 seconds? It's a really fun exercise. I, uh, I've, always, I've always enjoyed it and it's helped me out tremendously. The next step is I want you to think about your strength finder. And I'll give you my example at the end, so don't worry. But when you think about strengths, not just saying, hey, I'm organized or you know, I'm detail oriented or I really like science or I'm a chemistry lab bench pro. I want you to really, before you start writing down all these fancy and glamorous words on LinkedIn is think about what project was the most successful in your journey. And it could be a community project, it could be a science project, it could be a family or personal project, but just think about a project. And imagine why was that project successful? What role on that team excited you most when you completed that project? And then how did you navigate challenges? And did you activate any new skill sets that you didn't even know you had? 
And then the most important one is 360 feedback is what would your team say about your contributions on that project? So fill out your big rocks, fill out the other questions, and then fill out your very most successful project and some of those core things to think about. Because now you're going to start building what are your strengths? And I gave some words as an example. Are you strong at delegation, conflict resolution, agility, empathy, communication? The reason why I walk through, and I think it's really important to highlight this segment and activity during today's discussion, is because as women, I feel that we have to stand out and we need to stand together. And when we stand together, um, you know, really make our profiles, our brand really stand out. And how can we help others and support and advocate them to stand out? So as you wrap up your graduate career or undergraduate career or whatever your path is taking you, always build your brand. You know, focus on your big rocks and tell me, and I'm excited to hear what are your top strengths. And then incorporate those strengths in your LinkedIn and into your 30-second elevator pitch. It's going to help you come off as ready to go, ready to tackle it, and as a strong technology and science female. The final thing for the strength analysis is energy boosters and drainers. We all have them. I'm sure the other two speakers have them as well. You know, a drainer for uh, Dr. Megan is if we have a six hour Zoom meeting with zero bio breaks, that is a complete drainer. So I always try to balance out my calendar with boosters and drainers. You're going to have to have drainers, but make sure that you balance it with the boosters so that you can stay even keel and well balanced. Um, energy boosters, interacting with new individuals, mentoring individuals like you today, um, growing together, new technology, and then also I, I love learning new cultures and just meeting new people. So to wrap up this exercise, just really quick, I gave you a ton to think about and a ton to work on, I know, but it's really important that now is the time we have come a long ways um, for women in science and women leadership roles in companies. But in my honest opinion, I think that we could do better. And I think that we need to do better. And that's where I'm excited for the future for all of you is, you know, how are you going to change the, you know, the world and how, what can we do today to help you activate the best version of yourself just to go get it? So my overall thoughts are to be bold. I always tell all of my mentees and who I am is that you are in the driver's seat of your career. You need to build your brand, but not just build it. I actually go through and refine and revise my brand every two months to make sure that I'm being recognized and also people know my brand for the right reasons and the right characteristics. Embrace mentorship. I started mentorship at age seven and today, I still have core mentors. I, I mentor 80 individuals, eight zero. I know that's a lot. 2022, I do have to cut that down just a little bit. Uh, but also I have five core mentors. My philosophy on mentors, and this might help you today, is I have a community mentor, so a CEO at a financial institution that keeps me grounded to focus on my number one big rock, which is my family. I have a community nonprofit mentor because I always look at the best ways to give back and how I can enhance my portfolio in that perspective. I have two internal Corteva mentors, either really strong leaders or, you know, we call them laureate or fellows or advanced scientists. And I also select scientists that think differently than me. And I think that's really key because it shows you areas of I need to work on where are some areas of improvement that I have, but it also helps me activate some of my skill sets that I didn't know I had. And then my last mentor is always a fun one. I, I pick an individual that volunteers with me in a lot of different areas just to get perspective and grounding of who I am. Um, so a neighbor in the community or a colleague or university colleague. Uh, this year, I've been fortunate and grateful to really have a mentor from a vice president of a research institution and university where we're able to mentor each other. And it's just been so fun reading leadership books and also challenging each other to keep us fresh on both the public and the private sector. And so I know I said no more homework assignments, but now you have all of the solutions. So what I want you to do today is to take your big rocks, take your strength finders, and take all that information, your top five strengths, and update your LinkedIn profile. 
I know this may seem simple, but we know, I don't know about Bayer, but I know at Corteva, we really look at LinkedIn profiling and also just the word search. Do you have words that are going to pop and make you stand out from the rest of the candidates? And this is where you can start practicing your power of storytelling. I, I won't ask for volunteers today, but just think about it. You know, the words underneath your name are so big. Do they tell who you are today? You know, are you an influencer? Are you an advocate? Are you an ambassador? Do you like tech? Are you a plant breeder? Are you a chemist, a biochemist? You know, make sure that your expertise is highlighted in those words right underneath your picture. And then take it a step further. And then this is where, you know, tell the story of who you are and why you're passionate about agriculture, why you're passionate about plant breeding, why you're passionate about changing the world and feeding the growing population. It is such an exciting time. And I'm excited because every event that I get to speak at like this, I know that I'm talking to my future boss someday. So that might be you. So I want to say congratulations, but also best of luck if you have me as an employee. No, I, I'm looking forward to it. You're going to change the world and it's exciting. So make sure that you really tell that story in the light of what got you excited about agriculture. Did you grow up on a generational farm? Do you have ties to science and technology? If you caught the very first speaker, she told you about her passion of watching her dad as a scientist. That is powerful. Those are the stories that are going to help build credibility, but also build the empathy, the different diversity of thought, the way of thinking, and getting more seats at the table. So I'm excited. Um, if you want me to check out your LinkedIn profile, just send me a message and friend request, and I would be happy to help you on the journey of amplifying your LinkedIn profile. And with that, I just want to say, you know, as we're all scientists or leaders in this space, yes, it's important to ask questions and find answers. But one thing that I've been really, and I know the last speaker did a phenomenal job mentioning this as well. But as a scientist, I feel obligated to communicate with the world what we are learning. And this is an area that we are diving into, not even at Corteva, but even externally as well is how do we bring the community with us on this journey? And that could be the journey in my case of drone technology or robotics. It could be the journey of you know new food or better ways or different solutions, regenerative farming, whatever the topic is. How do we start bringing the community with us and how do we start building together in a greater level? I also just wanted to provide my email, my LinkedIn, my Instagram, if you're interested. Um, Instagram is pretty fun. That's where I mentor and engage um, a lot of like 12 to 18 year old girls that are just excited to explore STEM and, and engineering and just to go get it. And, you know, my final food for thought, because I think I gave all of you enough assignments to last a very, very long time. Um, but is I want you to focus on you. I want you to take these assignments to heart. And I'm going to share a couple of, you know, last minute, you know, last minute roundup here, but I want you to activate the best version of you. So really take time, find your big rocks, find your strengths, and then find a mentor. Go find a mentor, somebody that you can bounce ideas off of, somebody that will challenge you, somebody that will push you the extra mile, and somebody that will just sit back and enjoy to be on the journey with you as you become successful in this space today. So yes, I'm grateful. I'm excited. I had a diverse career. I started in plant breeding. Today, I'm in crop protection. I don't even know what January is going to bring. Hint, hint. Uh, we'll see. But it's been a fun journey because... I've always came with the mentality of communication, make every interaction count, but also building together, networking. How do you work together as a team? Are you independent or do you really thrive in a team centric environment? And then also I'm going to challenge you with one thing. I think it's important is that a job description has very specific bullet points. And I always tell my mentees, even if you don't have all the specific bullet points that it, it lists, go for it. And so that's your permission to go for it and go get it. And I'm excited for the panel discussion and for all the questions that are going to come in today, because one topic that's really important is that Corteva has amazing programs for, you know, recruiting employees. You know, we have a Delta program, diversity program to bring in aspiring new females, other cultures and genders just to come in and transform the world in agriculture. 
But my question today, and maybe this might be a good panel discussion leeway, is what are we doing to retain talented women? So I've seen a ton and I've served on many United States women in science panels about you know, the amazing things that we're doing um, for recruiting women scientists. But my question today is what are we doing to retain female scientists and what role do we have in it and what role do you have in it? And I think it's really exciting and I'm just gonna pause and say, thank you again. It was truly an honor to be here with all of you today. And I'm even more honored and excited to team up with my colleagues on the call today to answer any questions and inspire you to go get it and be you. Thank you.